Mark chapter 1, verse 16, and uh, we'll go in right there. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he sees Simon and Andrew, his brother, they're casting a net. Makes sense because they were fishermen. And uh, said, Jesus says, come after me and I will cause you, I will make you to become. Come on, say become. I will cause you to become fishers of men. Straightway they leave their nets and they begin to follow. Then he goes a little bit further. He sees James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And uh, they were in the ship. They had finished up for the night. They were mending their nets, taking care of things. He called them, and immediately they left their father Zebedee in the ship and uh, with the hired servants, and they began to pursue after him. As I was meditating this, you know, so often we see a redwood tree. How many of y'all have ever seen them? I've never been to the redwood forest. I've seen the pictures. That's on my list. It's on my list. I want to go see them. I, you know, my brother's been out there and he tells me about these just giant sequoias and whatever. I mean, and they're like just humongously hundreds of feet tall. And, but we, we see the finished product, but we forget that it started as a seed. You know, I, I've been in a plane and flown over the Grand Canyon. It's amazing how, you know, uh, 30,000, 35,000 feet changes your perspective. Uh, we won't go into it, but the Bible says we're seated in heavenly places in Christ. It ought to change our perspective of how we see things. You know, uh, that Grand Canyon is a mile wide, but from 35,000 feet, I can block it out with the end of my finger. Perspective. You know, and, and something we see is so big here, when we realize we're seated there, it becomes nothing. It becomes nothing. But that, that, it, is, it is so awesome, that, that the huge spectacle we see, but... Uh, did it possibly start as a little ravine that you could easily have stepped over? You know, we see the end result. I'm going to tell you, God has a plan for every single one of us. But none of us have arrived. None of us have arrived. I, I titled this morning, Still Under Construction. Still Under Construction. Don't, don't look at me and assume that I'm finished product. Just understand I'm still under construction. He's still working on me. How about you? How about you? I actually, I thought about wearing a, uh, a, a construction hat. And I said, well, I could get a construction hat on. We got an officer out front, two more, and we got YMCA, but I didn't want to do that. So, uh, matter of fact, Father, help us in Jesus' name not to get distracted from what you have for us. God, help us not to get discouraged in the process. Help us realize we're not alone. We're not alone. God, we're, we're, we're a work in progress. We may not be where we want to be, but thank you, Jesus, we are not where we used to be. But I pray that we don't get frustrated in the process, God. We don't, we don't get, uh, Lord, we don't get uh, messed up in our process. But God, understand that you're still working on us and give us grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, look at somebody and say, you're not alone. 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 At home, you are not alone. We are not alone in this room, in that process. And I want to look back through the Word of God because... Uh, just refocusing, you, you, we see these guys and, and ladies in the Word, and we so marvel at, at, at where they are and, and, and you know, what God did through them, but forgetting sometimes that what we see and, and the progress we see took years in its making, and then we get frustrated with ourselves. You know, to the point where maybe sometimes we get to the point where we want to quit. Now, anybody ever, you don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to embarrass yourself, but I've wanted to quit before. It's like, oh, man, what is the use you know, it's like, ah, when is this ever going to change? Because I see, you know, and marvel at the works. And, and God just reminded me, the tree started as a seed. Don't get frustrated in the process. You know, and don't, don't listen to the lie of the enemy that you don't have what it takes to make it all the way through. Matter of fact, let me, I want to remind us of the promise of God. Faithful is he that began a thing. He had never started something he didn't intend on finishing. So don't you give up on God because he ain't giving up on you. He ain't giving up on you. Genesis chapter 12, we'll see Abram, Abraham. He was a father of faith, but didn't start out that way. Didn't start out that way. Genesis 12, when you get there, you can say amen. And that's the preacher buying time to get there too. <laughs> Glory to God. Now the Lord, verse 1, had called Abram, come out from the country where you're living, from your kindred, from your father's house to the land that I'm going to show you. And I will make, will make, and don't, don't read that and misunderstand that there's a process. It's not an immediate, it's a process. You know, if you walk 20 miles in the woods, usually it's a 20 mile walk back out of the woods. You know, and it's a process. And, and, and there's a lot of times, you know, because we live in a, a microwave society and, and I've gotten used to them too, so I'm not preaching down to you. I'm just talking, we're just conversating this morning. Is that okay? Uh, we expect it instant. We expect it now, not realizing that sometimes the best things take a little more time. 
And don't rush the process because there's, there's a lesson in the journey. There's things we need to pick up along the way that are going to empower us. And, and, and the things we pick up aren't always lessons. Sometimes it's people. Matter of fact, the most important thing we can pick up along the way is people. You know, because it, it, it'll never be lonely at the top if we, if we don't uh, forsake bringing people with us. You know, the world has the idea it's lonely at the top. Well, that's because you're trying to kill your competition. Hey, I want to bring them with me. We need to bring them with us, right? And uh, so we get back to the journey. He said, I will cause you to become a father of many nations. You will be a blessing. I will make your name great. And you'll be, I'll bless those that bless you and come against those that come against you. Then that's the beginning. Come on, say the beginning. That's the beginning of his process. But just drop down to verse 10. We see in this process this spectacular call that God has on Abram. But we're not even out of the same chapter in verse 10. It says there's a famine that comes in the land, and Abram is going to go down into Egypt to hang for a while because there's some food down there, and the famine wasn't quite as bad. And it comes to pass when he's, he and his wife are going down into Egypt, he looks under Sarah, his wife, and he said, Look, woman, I know you're fine. He didn't say fine, but that's kind of King James for <laughs> King James. Yeah, it'd be like me looking at my wife. Whoa, come on, don't, don't nobody else look at her. But anyway, he said, You're fine, honey, and, and, and you know how they are down there. And they don't, they don't hesitate to kill somebody for their wife. So when we get down there, I want you to just say, you my sister. Oh, my goodness, father of faith. What, what happened? I mean, what, what, what caused this catastrophe of faith in your life? It's a process. It's a process. And just because you got a call don't mean you immediately stepped into perfection. For any of us, for any of us, for any of us, for any of us. You know, and sometimes the very call can be the thing that sets you up for your takedown because we get puffed up with the call and forget the process. You know, or maybe we get the call and forget, you know, that other people are in a process too. And just because your lane's different from my lane doesn't mean I can look down on you because you're not where I'm at or perceive that you're not where I'm at, where you may be ahead of me and I just don't see it. Here he is lying. Look, baby, just tell him I, you're my sister so they'll treat me well. Oh, father of faith. But God, if you can use him, then you can use me. There's hope for me. And I, we're not giving out these things so we can make excuses. I just want to encourage us to, you know, to enjoy the journey and understand the process. And maybe through this, shed a little more grace and a little more love and have a little more compassion for somebody else and theirs too. You know, it's amazing. I don't, I won't, I don't know about you, but I, I, I can look at my own self and, uh, and, and get frustrated at times because I catch myself expecting more grace than I give. You know, maybe expecting a little more mercy from than I actually give out. You know, so God remind us all that we're in this process. We're in this process. We won't even go into 16 where Abraham, Abram, you know, tries, tries to work his own plan with Hagar. Uh, you know, and, and don't let that twist you up. And, and at his time, that was a, a, a little bit more of a common practice. It don't happen today, right? We understand that. But, but what does that mean to you and I? Don't let political correctness pull you off the path. Right? It'll, it'll pull you off of your process. It'll pervert the process when you try to... Well, everybody else is doing it. Abram could have used the same thing. Everybody, it's working for everybody else. You ain't everybody else. God called you to a righteous path. God gave you a word, and, and what part of that word uh, have we not connected with that we've disassociated from and trying to make it on our own? Proverbs says, don't lean on your own understanding. You can't do this without God. If you do, you're destined to fail. Now, I've messed up many times. You know, I, I've never had a Hagar in that sense. Whoo, Jesus. But I have had a Hagar trying to make it work and make it fit and, and giving God my plan and, and trying to convince Him to work my plan and anoint my plan instead of just being patient and getting an anointed plan from God. Uh, don't, try to give, don't try to come up with your own plan and get God to anoint it. Just go to God and get a, an already anointed, Amen. destined for success plan. So much easier. So much faster. Right? Genesis 17, we finally see him coming more into his place. We're seeing him get a little more, get a little more toward where God wants him to be. 17. Chapter 1, I mean, uh, chapter 17, verse 1. It comes to pass when Abram's now 90 years old. And now he's 99. Is a, we we, we, we kind of cut into this thing. It's been 24. Come on, say 24. 24 years in the process that we see him becoming 
this mighty man of faith that we marvel at, this mighty man of faith that we go on and just admire so much, even putting Isaac on the altar. <laughs> I don't believe he could have done it on day one. You know, don't get frustrated in your own progress. Don't get frustrated in your own process. Understand, you know, and, and, and be encouraged that just as God worked with him, worked it with them, he's working with us and he's working for us and he's working through us and he's working on us come on God's faithful you know still under construction say still under construction still under construction you know for for time's sake we won't go into Jacob we know he had his issues you know but he ended up God using him to, to birth an entire nation as well Joseph had his David oh David was the one of the greatest kings that ever ruled but he also had some of the greatest mistakes that we've ever seen right Right? But God worked him through. Now, don't, be go, don't go Bathsheba hunting. That's why I'm not licensing us or, or, you know, for the ladies, whatever that translates into. You know, don't be, don't be looking for that. <laughs> don't use that as an excuse. Well, God, you know, still got him through. <laughs> no, nah, just don't they make that mistake because the, the thing we sometimes overlook in there, yes, I know there's forgiveness. Yes, I know God can, but there's consequences also for sin. You know, and David was forgiven, but the consequence was the sword will never leave your house. You're going to have trouble for the rest of your days because of the door you open for the adversary. So you just realize the door you may be kicking open by, by saying, well, I've got grace to do. No, you don't. No, you don't. There's a perversion of grace being taught, and it's a disgrace to God. It's a disgrace to God. It's a disgrace to the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus hanging on the cross and dying for us. Grace is not a license to sin. Grace is an empowerment to keep me from going back to the hog trough. Grace is an empowerment to keep you and I from going back to the regurgitation. I won't get any deeper than that, but that's what the Bible says. As a pig or a hog going back to the mire, as a dog going back to the regurgitation, grace is an empowerment to set us free from that once and for all. Once and for all. John chapter 6. We'll be to bring it up to the New Testament. Because it's not just an Old Testament thing. People is people, y'all. People is people. I don't care if it's 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, or five minutes ago. John chapter 6. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Go into chapter 6. Kind of get an eyeball on some of these disciples. John 6. We'll jump down to verse 5 it said when Jesus lifted up his eyes he sees this great number of people and uh, so he comes to one of his disciples Philip and he says Philip he said uh, we're going we're going we're going to set on some some uh, uh, a spread how are we going to buy bread so that all these people can eat and uh, this he said to Philip to prove him to test him uh, don't 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 miss this point uh, Jesus doesn't tempt you and I but he will test you and I a test is not to make us feel ignorant, it is not to belittle us, but it is to make us aware of our own progress, or not. It is to show us where we are so we know where we might need to improve. You know, and the thing is, is I can remember back to school, I know we just, we chiseled out our answers on stone, I know, don't send me text, I know some of y'all said, yeah, I was there when, you know, he said, hey, how are we going to start this off, right, don't let the gray hair fool you, but anyway, uh, I never uh, was fearful of taking the test that I had prepared for. Matter of fact, I kind of looked forward to it because I knew I was going to smoke it. The only test that I was hesitant to take was the ones I knew I'd been kind of slacking. I knew I wasn't ready for. You know, because all it's going to do, all a test in our life is going to do is expose us to a weakness in our life that we need to strengthen up in. Matter of fact, you know, James says, count it all joy when you go through tests. Uh, I'd rather God show me a weakness than the devil exploit a weakness. Under, don't miss what I just said. I said, I'd rather God show me a weakness before the devil can exploit it. Because God, God will show me to better me, the devil will exploit it to hurt me. So welcome the test. Welcome the test. Welcome the test. Jesus is putting this word to Philip to test him. I'm, I'm going to see if you've been listening to what I've been saying. I'm going to see if you've been watching what I've been doing. Because if you want to do what I do, you got to do what I do. That's the whole point of his life was to show us how to do stuff. 
kingdom stuff. He said, if you do what I do, you do what I do. He, might, he said, the same works that I do and even greater works shall you do. Because I'm going to give you an empowerment. So he did this to test Philip. You know, Philip been waiting for a while. Philip obviously had an opportunity to learn, but Philip evidently wasn't learning, wasn't listening, wasn't watching. 200 penny worth of bread ain't even... Uh, oh, Philip, oh, we got work to do. Come on, say still under construction. Still under construction. Flip over to John 14. We know Jesus shows him again what to do. I'm so thankful for the patience of God. I'm so thankful for the mercy of God. John 14, 6. Jesus says, uh, you know, this, this, this one that we all know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known the Father. If you had known me, listen to what he's saying. If you had known me, you should have known the Father. You see me, you see him. He said, from here forth, that you said, you know him. Because you've seen him. You've seen him. You've seen him. They've been with Jesus a while, a while, a while. This generation said they've been with Jesus a minute. They've been with Jesus a lot of minutes. And we're picking up Philip still in his process. Come on, still in his process. And Philip says, well, well Lord, just show us the Father, and we're good. <laughs> Did you not hear what I just said, Phil? Phil, yeah, yeah I just, we're just going to condense it. <laughs> Have I been so long with you, and yet you still don't understand? Process, process, process. I, I, I feel like I could substitute my name in there because I can hear my mom saying, you are so stubborn in your head. And you are so bullheaded sometimes. And I said, I, you talk, I, obviously, it's got to be Bob you're talking about, not me because I'm the golden child. <laughs> That's my older brother. And he's not here, so right under the bus. He's probably watching, so hey, a little payback probably coming. So, uh, Father, forgive that seed. Maybe we can kind of uproot that. Philip. How long is it going to take? How long is it going to take? How long is it going to take? But he, 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 he let's just see his pride. Just go to uh, John 20. We'll, we'll come back to Philip in just a minute. But while we're in John, we'll just go to John 20. Because Philip's not by himself. I mean, it, he, but he's just showing us this snapshot into the lives of the disciples because we marvel at what God did through them. And, don't, don't, and sometimes we miss what God did in them as he was doing things through them. And, and the more he can do in us, the more he can do through us. I don't know why I'm demonstrative with my hands today, but anyway. John 20, verse 24. John 20, verse 24. He said, Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with Jesus when he you know, first showed up uh, to reveal himself to the disciples. We know this is after he was crucified, resurrected. And it said the other disciples were there. And he said, we've seen the Lord. But he said, hmm, I ain't believing. I don't believe it. Unless I can see his hands and put my fingers in the place where the nails went. I'm not believing. Come on. Sometimes I don't know what, how the enemy comes at you. I know how it comes at me. And he gives us like a real good excuse to not be, you know, where we ought to be or not do something we ought to be doing just like he was giving him if i don't see it i don't believe it we if i was walked with jesus i'd believe well here we have an example of somebody who walked with jesus heard jesus for himself and still wasn't there don't beat yourself up understand the process it's not a faith that we can see that empowers us it's a, it's a word that we can believe that will empower us you got to believe it before you'll ever see it but if you believe it i promise you you will see it I promise you, that's not my word, that's his word. Look at what he says. Because Jesus shows up eight days again, and it says they're, they're kind of hanging out, and then this movement, all of a sudden, pff, Jesus shows up in the midst. That is so wild, y'all. It'd be like just whew, right here on the stage, and he'd be showing up, and I'd be freaking out. Uh, ah, freak out. Anyway, so it's, uh, he shows up, and I, you know, he's going to have to say this to me as well, peace. You know, he'd probably say, it's, it's okay, it's cool, it's me, and I'd be like in the lobby checking. <laughs> And then he tells Thomas, you know, reach, your, you reach in your finger and behold my hands and reach in your, your feel in my side where the spear, you know, made a place. And be not faithless, but believe. And Thomas answered and he said, my Lord and my God. Yeah, 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 I guess so. Thomas, he said, because you've seen, you believe. Blessed are those who haven't seen but still believe. 
Father, we believe. Help our unbelief. God, let us get beyond the place where we have to see it. Let us just know. Let us just. You said those that know their God. Lord, we don't, we don't want to know you by works alone. We don't want to know you by signs alone. We want to know you by your word. By your word, but Lord, by just the power of your presence. Because if we have that in our life, God, that there is nothing, God, that we won't be able to accomplish. So help us in this process. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. Acts chapter 8, we'll jump down because I want to see Philip actually walking in his call. I don't want to leave Philip hanging out there. Acts chapter 8, we know Philip had his trials, and, and not just his trials, but his tests and his, his experiences. But in Acts chapter 8, like I said, we don't want to just leave him hanging out. Chapter 8, verse 3, it says, Saul was making havoc of the church, therefore they were being scattered abroad. And uh, it says, uh, let's see, where do we want to go? 8. It said, that as they were being scattered out, Philip comes from down from the area of Samaria and preaches Christ. Verse 5, verse 6 says, the people with one accord, listening to the things that Philip speaking, seeing the miracles that he did. Unclean spirits, devils crying out with a loud voice, many possessed, being, being healed and set free in palsies and sickness and disease, being driven out and great. He made it. Come on, say he made it. Come on, he made it. He made it. Now, he's still a work in progress, but there's hope for us. There's hope for us. There's hope for us. If he made it, we can make it. Don't, 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 just don't allow the enemy to frustrate us. We won't go for time's sake, but Luke chapter 9 talks about the sons of thunder, James and John. Uh, they didn't just arrive when they got the call. How many of you know when they were with Jesus and there came a place where he was going uh, past the town and they didn't treat him well? Lord, you want us to call now and fight? Let's just burn them up. God didn't call you to the burn them up ministry, okay? <laughs> You, you see their temper just like, you know, it's like, oh, if they're not going to listen, we'll just smoke them, you know. We got the brimstone ministry, right? It's like, uh, you ever run across somebody that feels like they have the brimstone ministry? It's like, God, what, what part? And that's, Jesus looked at them and said, you don't understand what spirit is operating in you. Right? You got, you got the smoke them ministry? Come on, now that's okay for a ham, but not for people. I mean, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> okay? That, that, that's not what we do, y'all. That's not what we do. And, and it's unfortunate that people misunderstand. And when you misunderstand, you misrepresent. And there ain't nothing that drives off the world faster than a misrepresentation of love. A misrepresentation of the God of love. God ain't the smoke of ministry, okay? He's the love of ministry. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. The experiences we see uh, of the judgment that was laid out in the Old Testament was to show us how far we missed the mark and show us how much we need Jesus. But God sent Jesus so that mercy would now be in place for every one of us. Thank you, Lord. We're, we're, we're a work in process. We're a work in process. We're a work in process. Go to John 21. Let's see what time it is. John chapter 21. It's just so much. I mean, and it's, it's all good, man. Genesis to maps, every bit of this is good, right? But John chapter 21, verse 15. We know Peter definitely had some issues, right? And we can understand the early on issues. We can understand the, the wrestlings that he went with and the things that he's going on. But right even up to the time of, of Jesus being, being uh, offered on the cross, we need, you know, just, uh, like just, just right at the point where Jesus is about to be offered, Peter, you know, this mighty man of God that has walked with Jesus, I mean, been with him for three, three years of intense, intense discipleship, right? But denying Jesus. I don't know him. I don't know him. And even after that, you know, when Jesus is resurrected, we kind of come in on here on John 21, and, and, and he's been raised from the dead, you know, but they haven't seen him in a bit. So it said after they finished, Jesus called Simon because they had this experience on the beach where they'd go out. He, Peter returned back to what was familiar. You know, and, and we probably should have jumped back up because it, something didn't happen when he thought it was going to happen, and instead of staying with what he knew, he went back to the familiar. I don't know what y'all going to do. I'm going fishing. I'm going, and that, and that, that ought to be a lesson for every one of us. When you feel the pull back to the familiar, realize what's going on. Just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's right. Just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's a place where we need to be allowing ourselves to go back to. You know, you think about Lot's wife being drawn back to the familiar. It didn't work out so well for her. And it probably won't work out so well for us. You know, stay with what you know. And see, he, even in that, he was having to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. 
Just because you don't see Jesus with you, don't miss the fact that Jesus is there. He's with us. He's with us. And not only now is he, was he with us, he is in us. We have that next level, right? We have that next level because of the Holy Spirit, which we'll see in just a minute. But we kind of cut in where he had had that and he goes fishing, but he comes up empty. Come on, say empty. I, I love this. I love this. I want to see the replay. How I many of y'all hope heaven has a big screen? You know, so I can just kind of, I want to watch David sling the rock. I want to watch, you know, the, the water open up. You know, I, I want to just see all, all that stuff on heaven's big screen. I, I, there's, there's, I want to see the sun stand still. And I, I, I want to, and, and Jesus is on the shore. And, and obviously, you know, he never lacks. Uh, so he kind of calls out, hey, y'all had any luck? He knows they cold busted. He knows they're coming up empty, empty, empty. What y'all got? Well, I got plenty. You know, and then he causes a miracle to happen, and they catch fish again. You know, so by the time he gets up, he's got them cooking on the shore. So after they finish dining, verse 15, Jesus says to uh, Simon, he said, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? We know this uh, more than these around. He said, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, feed my lambs. Basically, you know, if you love me, you're doing something from a people. You know, the love we have for God ought to be expressed by an action to the people of God. How can we say we love him and don't do nothing for him? Uh, And and, and I'll just cut in with this, too, because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh. So, because there's a whole, not a whole, there's a, there's a, a, a kind of a skewed uh, belief that's being released, and it, and it is in major, 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 major error. I love Jesus, but not so much the Word. You're missing it, babe. You're missing it. You completely, you're buying a lie, you're listening to a demon. You can't love Jesus and not love the Word because they're the same. They're the same. Oh, we love Jesus, but I'm, you know, his word just kind of comes across harsh sometimes. Again, love needs to be aggressive at times if it sees somebody in error. <laughs> love is not passive by any means. By any means. It, it, anyway, <laughs> you say you love me, feed my sheep. He says to him the third time, obviously, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? Peter, being grieved at this because now he's exposed him three times, do you love me more than all these? He says, you know, when you were young, verse 18, you did kind of what you wanted to do, but when you grow old, somebody else will kind of guide you. This speaking about the, the, the path that God had for him, but he says, follow me. But even in this, even though Peter's been with him three years, and even though he's getting his own lesson right now, there, there's a part of that flesh that still hadn't been nailed down, that, that wants to uh, not go down by itself and not man up and just take the correction. Peter turns around and sees John, who he's really been jealous of for the last three years looking at him and said, what about him? He's got the brother syndrome. Come on, he's got the blame it, name it, blame it. It's all the way back to Adam and Eve. This woman you gave me, this snake you put in the garden, what, we, we, as long as we blame, we're never going to have power to come up of it. When we, when we assign something blame, we don't understand the weakness that, that it opens us up to and, and the... And the uh, the position it puts us in of having something lord over our life. When you, when you assign something blame, you assign it authority over you. This person made me so mad. This husband is controlling me. This wife is, this boss is. This, uh, until we rise up and, and, and take authority in our own life, we're going to have a tough life. I'm not saying things don't happen, but I'm telling you God's given us empowerment to rise up. Take authority over our own life. Uh, your joy comes from your, your name being in the book of life. It don't come from people. What about him? And Jesus basically told him, ain't none of your business about him. Stay in your progress. Stay in your process. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Even then, he hadn't arrived. Even then, he hadn't got to the point he needed to be. But come on, let's go to Acts chapter 2 because we don't want to leave, leave old Pete hanging out either. Acts chapter 2, verse 14. We know the day of Pentecost had come, and we kind of cut in on where the outpouring had already happened, and Jesus standing up because there's a huge noise. Somebody uh, maybe today didn't fully understand why the shofar was being blown. Well, I'm sure they didn't understand the noise that was going on in Jerusalem, but it sure brought some change. Uh, Don't be against something just because you don't understand it. 
You know, don't, don't question something. Get into the Word and find out, is there a Bible precedent for what we're seeing? Is there a Bible precedent? Now, we're, going to, we're not going to become church of the horn blower, okay? You, you, you can't take a truth and make it your entire truth, right? You, you can't take something like that and make it your entire doctrine because that's how cults are formed. That's how cults are started. That's how, you know, misdirection and mis, uh, misconception comes about. You know, uh, so, but, but just because uh, it, it, it happened doesn't, uh, just, you see what I'm saying. Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said, You men in, uh, of Judea and those that dwell at Jerusalem. He said, Listen, he said, uh, Listen to my word. He said, We're not drunk. They're not drunk as you suppose. See, and this is only the third hour of the day. Look, I know, guys, they tie it on every once in a while, but not, anyway. He said, This is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days saith God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. What? All flesh. All flesh. Your sons and your daughters prophesy. Young men see in visions. Old men dream in dreams. On my servants and handmaids, I'm going to pour out. I'll show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth. Don't miss those as well. Blood moons and all that kind of thing. It's just not some natural phenomenon. God set things like that up to show us a, a God time t- table. A God timetable. Now, we don't live by signs no more than we live by horn blowing. But don't miss the signs. Right? Don't miss the signs. If you're going somewhere you've never been before, learn to appreciate, you appreciate a sign. Right? You ever been on a, on a road course or a journey somewhere? And, and I thank God for the mile markers. It lets me know I'm getting a little closer. It lets me know I'm, I'm about to be at my destination. You know, but uh, don't live by the signs either. He said, blood and fire and vapor or smoke, the sun turned into darkness, the moon into blood before that great and notable day. But he, he tells them, and, and it says, on that day of Pentecost, Peter is the one that is used so mightily to preach a message that 3,000 people come in in one day. Come on, he made it. He made it. Now, he hadn't arrived, but thank God he got his breakthrough. He got his breakthrough. How about you? I'm going to say me too. Me too, me too, me too. Well, what was the key for, for, for this turn in his life? What was the key for so many of the disciples to, to have their breakthrough, or to have that breakout moment, or, or to have this experience that kind of launched them or catapulted them in, in, into where we see them? I'm glad y'all want to know, because I did too, right? Go to Acts chapter 1. Just hang a left and go back. Acts chapter 1, verse 4, Jesus uh, they were assembled together, and Jesus is kind of giving them the, the, the last-minute instruction. They're about to break out of the huddle. You know, we don't live in the huddle, but thank God for the huddle, All right? The church is a huddle. We, we come in here and get the instruction, but then we got to get on the field and, and play the game, All right? Don't live in the huddle. Now, I, I appreciate the huddle because it's where I get my plan, but you can't live in the huddle. We ought to do a message on not living in the huddle. Too many people want to just come in here and hunker down. That ain't what it's all about. It's about getting instruction for a performance of it to bring the kingdom. Woo, Jesus. They're huddled up, and he said, you've got to wait for the promise. He said, you've heard about it. You know, and he, he told them, you know, in Luke and in John about the coming of the Holy Ghost. John baptized with water, but not many days from now, the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out. And they were wanting to know at that time, Lord, are you going to set up the physical kingdom, restore Israel back? And he said, that's not for you to know. The times of the seasons which the fathers put under his own power. But you, come on, say me. You shall receive power. Come on, power. I shall receive power. We can put ourselves right in this when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Power for what? So we can have goosebumps? No, power to be a witness. Power to be a witness. And he said, Jerusalem. Why did he say that? Because that's where they were. We could be Hepsiburg, Martinez, or wherever your there is. Power to be a witness there. Joyce Meyer said so many times, people want to run across and be a witness in Africa and can't conquer dirty dishes in the sink, can't conquer your yard, can't conquer. Joyce said that. Get mad at her. <laughs> in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth, power. What set these guys apart? What launched them into that next phase? An empowerment from the Holy Ghost. Because we will never, never become without the power of the Spirit in us. He said, it's not by might, not by power, but it's by my Spirit, says the Lord. Says the Lord. But even in that, even in that, I I still got to show us something else. Acts chapter 15, because even though we've received and been, uh, so much power has been made available to us, 
Just because the power is there doesn't mean we always tap in. Acts chapter 15, because I got to bring this back in. You got to bring this back in because so many times the Holy Spirit gets blamed for a lot of stupid stuff. Yeah, I said that in church. Well, it's just how he made me. No, 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 no. That, that may be how you were made, but he remade you. That may be how sin nature was, but God didn't remake you in that image. Acts 15, verse 35. Because I want us to check this out. I mean, y'all think Paul's pretty, pretty sharp, pretty on point. He was, right? He was. But just because he was don't mean he was perfect. Paul still had a process. Paul had a process too. Even though he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Never met Jesus in person, but actually did probably more than most of the disciples who physically walked and talked with him. Paul was also an encouragement to you and I to show us this by the Spirit. By the Spirit, by the Spirit we know Him. By the Spirit we can do what He's called us to do. By that empowerment and that alone, that's what gives us the ability. Not, not hey, Laosha. Paul and Barnabas, verse 35 of Acts 15, continued in Antioch teaching and preaching. I mean, they were blowing and going, revival and things going. I mean, mighty stuff happening, y'all. Mighty stuff. And others also with them. And after some days, verse 36... Paul looks over at Barnabas and says, hey, man, let's, uh, let's go on back down to the cities where we've been and, and, and confirm the souls and preach to them and just have some, you know, some good God time. And Barnabas, uh, he says, hey, let's, let's take John with us, whose surname was Mark. They'd had a little trouble with Mark. You know, times got a little tough, and Mark, you know, he had some issues. He wasn't quite there because he was in his process, too. And so he didn't go with him. He kind of cut and run, kind of cut and run and left him hanging. Well, well Paul got a little ticked off about that. Paul said, man, he, he, you know, he, he burned me once, shame on you, burn me twice. Y'all heard that saying, right? But evidently, that's not a God saying. That's not a God saying because we need to extend mercy. You know, we see the same thing where, where they, they're getting a lesson on forgiveness. And he, he didn't say forgive them once and write them off. Or twice because they might make the same mistake. He said 70 times seven. It's amazing, that, you know, back to me, it's, I mean, how many times do I want the 70 times 7, but I don't want to even give out 7. Mm. Now, here Barnabas is wanting to take Mark, give him a second chance, but Paul thought it not good because he cut and run from him when they was in Pamphylia, and he didn't go with them for the work. And listen to this, verse 39, Here they are, Holy Spirit, filled, power, miracle, working tongue, talking, blah, blah, blah. The contention... The argument, the dissension between them was so sharp that they broke fellowship at this point and went opposite directions. It said so sharp between them that they departed from asunder. Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas. Now, God worked through them even in this dysfunction because God understands the process better than us. But does, none of us are, have arrived. And just because you got the Holy Ghost and just because you pray four hours a day and just because you can recite, you know, Genesis to maps, don't think for a minute that any of us are at a place where God don't still need to do some work on us. Man, he said, don't nobody get big-headed. Walk in love every day. Walk in humility every day. He said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ, who was in the form of God, not thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but took upon himself the form of a servant. What, is, what does that mean? There is no pride whatsoever. Servant doesn't need recognition from anything or anyone. A servant serves, and he's talking about a kingdom servant. A servant serves because of the love of the Father in his heart. A servant does what he does. A son or a daughter do what we do because of the love of God in us, not from what's coming from the accolades of man, but because of the heart of love that we have inside of us. Paul's temper, but Paul later writes, because we know Paul still a good guy. Paul later writes, 1 Corinthians, I die daily. Even in that, there were lessons to be learned. I want to encourage you. There's joy in the process. Don't get frustrated with yourself. Don't let the devil beat you up because of the things you're going through. Let's stand. Because I feel like the devil has come against so many here online as well with condemnation. With condemnation and accusation. 
Ah, oh, look at this, what you did. I, I, I'm, I'm just assuming y'all may be like me. And it's like, man, how could you do something so dumb? Here you are, you know, filled with the Spirit. And I, you, you may as well just quit, man. You, you just, there's no hope. There's always hope. We sang about the God of hope this morning. Do you think that was an accident? No, it was a divine word from God to encourage us today. They didn't know what I was going to be speaking on. They had no idea what the Spirit had spoken to me to come with this morning. And I had no idea what the Spirit had moved on them to release. But we heard a word about a song about hope today. Because God wants us to have joy in the process, joy in the journey. Jesus said in Luke, if any man will come after me, let him just, you just deny yourself. But if something happens, just put it in your past. Put it in your rear view mirror. Learn from whatever that was so we just don't do it again. Say, Father, thank you for grace. Lord, grace to help me not make... Re- I don't want to be a repeat offender. <laughs> Lord, help me not be that. I don't want to be a repeat offender. Let, let me learn a lesson from this. And Father, if my scar can help somebody else make the same mistake, then let me never be ashamed to show my scar. Because they're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony. Never let the devil embarrass you for where you've been. Never let the devil embarrass you for where you've been. Let it be a testimony for where God brought you out of. Throw it in the devil's face. Devil, you think you're going to mess me up from failing at this or a a bad marriage or doing time? No, no, my testimony is going to set somebody free. My testimony is going to encourage somebody in their journey. My testimony maybe helps somebody from making that mistake in their own life. Devil, you're not going to shut down. I'm going to acknowledge my imperfection, but greater is he that is in me. God's bigger than any mistake that I've ever made or ever will make, because that's what grace is about. I just want to encourage you today. If if the devil's been beating you up with where you've been, I want to just ask you, you can come down here just to to stand up and say, God, I'm a work in progress, but I thank you for the progress I'm making. I thank you, oh God, that I'm going to have joy in my journey. I thank you, Father, that even in my journey, it's going to encourage somebody else. And he might be trying to get you embarrassed to where you don't share it because that testimony is the very thing that's going to help somebody. But expose the devil today. Devil, I'm not going to believe your lie. I'm not going to receive your lie. I understand now that I may have messed up but I'm in good company and God if you extended them grace and kept working on them then you're going to do the same for me because you're not a respect to a person you're a covenant keeping God Father we thank you as people begin to just respond to your word even online Father we extend mercy and we extend grace right now you can just you can just extend your hand towards that screen as well God's going to meet you right in your living room right where you are don't you give up don't you turn don't you don't don't you stop now don't you stop now don't you stop now God is for you God is for you God is for you don't let that devil talk you out uh, of keeping on in your journey. Don't let, you devil, don't let the devil talk you out of pressing on into that place that God has for you. You are a work in progress. Come on, let's give him praise this morning. Thanks for joining us today on the New Life Everyday YouTube channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to receive the latest messages from Pastor Brian and the New Life team. If you enjoyed today's message, be sure to share this video with a friend. To learn more about us, visit our website, newlifeeveryday.com. Again, thanks for watching. God bless.